This is Gregory Pickett, Lone Wolf, Smoking Word Artist, representing Shot Town. What's good? All right, so how long have you been doing poetry? I've been writing poetry since I was in first grade. I, uh, I met Gwendolyn Brooks as a part of like a poetry contest. So I wrote a poem about fishing with my uncle, and I won. I, I would like to tell you that it was all deep and about the rippling oceans. It was probably like, I went fishing with my uncle, yay! And you know, I met Gwendolyn Brooks and been writing poetry ever since. So uh, what did the meaning with Gwendolyn Brooks do for you, or do to you? You know, when you're in first grade, you know, I remember standing in front of her like, who is this lady? Okay, Gwendolyn Brooks. I remember she gave us a book, that was the, what we won, and I'm like, all right. No big deal. And then as I got older, and I, you know, every Black History Month, they keep saying Gwendolyn Brooks, and and it just really affected me to the point where I was like, hey, I met somebody really important when I was really, really young, and uh, it even influenced my decision to go to Chicago State because I knew that perhaps I could run into Gwendolyn Brooks, and I ended up running into Gwendolyn Brooks again, and that's when it really affected me because after all of those years, she remembered me. If it wasn't for one of the bricks, I probably wouldn't be a poet today. I noticed you mentioned how Saul Williams, uh, he also affected your career. <laughs> yeah. How, how did that happen? Oh, Saul Williams. When I was uh, a freshman in Chicago State, I was at the... Uh, one of the Brooks writing conference that they do every year and it's that year 98 99 something like that so Williams was like a guest speaker for the, uh, the open not the open mic but the poetry contest and I had never seen spoken word poetry before like performance poetry and he got up there and he did his like you know famous amethyst rocks and and I forget who I was sitting next to but I said I could do that <laughs> and then that's it I've been like doing like straight spoken word ever since so I've met him a couple of times too and, and he always remembers me when we run into each other so that's always like wow Saul Williams, Wendell Brooks people mean something to me um also you have an album coming out can you tell us about that yes um I'm working on my own CD so you know uh when you see me at these open mics I can be just like everybody else got them CDs five dollars five dollars and they expected drop date for my little CDs called Lone Wolf and it should be out December 20th 2008 coming to an open mic near you and if not you can hit me on MySpace and I will send you one <laughs> it's going to be mostly spoken word and uh, I do have one little surprise decided I'm gonna throw a little rap on there just to let people know that I'm a poet spoken word artist first and foremost but I can flow. I, I can, you know, throw some lyrics out there every once in a while. So I'm no lyricist of the year, but I can hold my own, you know what I'm talking about? So right, that's what's up. So yeah. um, when going through some of your work, I noticed you had a poem about dreams. When you're talking about like you a boxer and you lie, I got knocked out. Right. <laughs> what inspired you to write that poem? It was at a point where I realized that poetry and spoken word, that's what I wanted to do to keep a roof over my head and food in my belly. I wanted that to be my career no matter what and that's my dream and you know the nature of dreams is such that sometimes they're hard you know sometimes it's hard to attain what you want but as long as you hold on to it no matter what anything can happen so on the real when I was a kid I did want to be a boxer <laughs> I used to be like really big into Mike Tyson and I, I saw him get, like get knocked out once and I was like no, <laughs> I'm straight. So yeah, you go. Uh, Thank you. Go over some of your accomplishments. Sure. Uh, 2005, when I was attending uh, Western Illinois University, I uh, won the Creative Writers Society Award for Poetry, and uh, my poem Deluge got put into a special. Uh, issue of their literary journal called A Flavor of Ink. 2005 and six, I won first place in the ACUI Regional Poetry Slam held at, you know, I think the first year was at U of I and Urbana-Champaign and the next year it was uh, in Notre Dame. Um, and then uh, 2006 and 2007, I won second place in the online virtual poetry slam held by Citizens for Global Solutions and that was a really really big one for me because you know it's a it's an online poetry slam so it's like people from around the world are like judging you and you're competing with people from around the world and to win second place two years in a row it's like 
I, you know, I, I guess I got a little bit of talent. You know? <laughs> and uh, most recently, um, in March of this year, actually 2007, earlier this year, I got second place in the uh, second annual Rutabaga Poetry Slam in Galesburg, Illinois, which is hosted by Mark Smith, who um, created Poetry Slams. And I won a poetry, uh, what's it called, a uh, Poet's Choice Award at the 2007 Regional Poetry Slam held in Columbus, Ohio. So um, it's funny how I, I got that uh, award, though. I have this poem called um, I Write Poetry in the Dark. And uh, in the poem, I say, I write poetry in the dark because I'm a lone wolf. So you like the name of the CD. I'm a lone wolf. Grr, right? <laughs> and um, when I got done, the MC got up and said, Grr. And then, like, everybody started saying, Grr. For like the rest of the weekend, and then I like walked into the like uh, the last night where they was handing out the awards. They was like, he, I was a little late. They was like, he's here, he's here. I'm like, yay, I'm here. And they're like, you won an award. I was like, for what? I won best catchphrase <laughs> for, for three letters, girl. I was like, all right, I'll take it. So, which accomplishment meant the most to you? I think, I think the uh, awards from the uh, Citizens from Global Solutions were like. Yeah, I meant the most to me just because I mean it's such a massive event I mean to I remember you know seeing these submissions from people from uh, Africa from Canada you know it's like this is a worldwide thing and I got second place you know it's like wow you know so I mean that one really really got me you know so what do you hope to achieve next year Next year, 2009, is my time. Next year, it, it's going down. I'm going to, like, open up for somebody somewhere. I ain't sure who it is, but I know I'm, I'm going to be opening up for somebody somewhere. If not, you know, you know, like having my own shows. And, I mean, I'm really going to push my CD. I'm going to have a book out next year, too, which is called Voodoo Rain in Chicago. Look for that one. How they come about? Uh, Voodoo Rain in Chicago is going to be a um, collection of my poems because uh, I do spoken word poetry, but, you know, if I do a poem like a Blue Light People, which has a certain effect when I speak it, it's going to have a, a totally different effect if you read it. Some people prefer to read. Um, so I'm going to put some of my favorite poems together. And the name of the book, Voodoo Rain, of Chica Voodoo Rain in Chicago, is actually the name of a poem that Gwendolyn Brooks herself said that she likes. And uh, so I said, whenever I get it together and I make that first book, uh, to honor her memory, I will n name my first book after the poem that she liked. Yo, this is one of my uh, newest pieces called Blue Light People. Have you ever seen the blue lights of Chicago? Those flashing blue lights of the shy? Put there by politicians of corruption to stop this eruption of cats from selling rocks. Nah, selling mountains to people too high to see reality. There's cats out here selling loose squares and socks and DVDs and incense always underneath them flashing blue lights of the shy. And before I ever stop to ask myself why I open up my eyes wide and I can answer my own questions. Like why do my brothers come to blows over two dollars fucking with that two for eight come up? Why people never believe me when I talk about a different way to kick it? Guess I'm just Gregory Pickett so I can go stand underneath those flashing blue lights of the shy somewhere in the night. Searching for delights that I don't deserve. Learning to swerve my way out of trouble and into a hot meal because believe me, I'm sick of having struggle for breakfast. I don't own a necklace, a watch, a ring, anything considered bling or bling, but somehow, somehow, I continue to function in society. Damn, go figure. I don't idolize jigger. Can't stop using the word nigga. And I thoroughly enjoy drinking that liquor, getting dumb-faced and seeing the sights. They look ever so lovely under those blue lights of Chicago. I love the way that they illuminate the Newport butts, broken bottles, empty 211 cans, shattered hopes, and lost sense of identity. And I guess it doesn't matter that the money that the Wendy spent on flashing surveillance cameras could have been better spent on delicious books for high school kids that be hungry for knowledge. You know, kids that.
that dare to dream to go to college. Fuck giving them the edge they so desperately need. You know, they can always go sell weed, sell ass, sell hard. Because the blue lights of the shy be hard. They never keep you safe. You see, the street light people have become the blue light special. You pick your poison and them boys be poised to prep your potion. Always going in the same motion, backwards. Because going forwards is too much like doing right. And stepping to the light won't work unless it's flashing and blue. They ain't got a clue. Even when it comes up from behind and takes advantage of them, still won't know what to do. Rather be sheep and let the TV be the shepherd. Rather serve boulders than burgers. Rather be crazy than conscious. Rather be ready to die than rational to live. Never able to give five minutes thought to who's watching who through those flashing spy cams that Chicago claims cuts down on crime. I see it all the time. You see, my thought is that they know the cops are watching, but the niggas, they don't give a fuck. But what's worse is, shit, neither do the cops. Alright, well, thank you for your time. Nah, thank you. Shy Ground holding it down.